We are finding out more about the man who was the prime suspect in what could be the biggest serial killing spree in state history. Who is William Howell? Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Michelle. And for those of you that are new here, welcome to our channel. My name is Jessie. We are Moms on Crime, and in this channel, we talk about true crime and paranormal stories. Today, Michelle has a story for us about this serial killer, so I'm excited. So who are we talking about today, Mama? Today, we're going to talk about William Devin Howell, but before I jump in, I noticed on one of our last videos, there was, there was some questions about why we don't film together, so... <laughs> The reason why we are not filming together and we're using Zoom is because of the coronavirus and we live in Arizona. The state has opened back up for the most part. The stay at home order was lifted. However, Jesse and I are not really down with that and the nope, numbers nope. have spiked here. Like over 3,000 yeah. new cases a day, every day and we're moms. You know, hence moms on crime, right? We're both moms <laughs> and young children. And I i know they say it doesn't affect kids, but that's not something either one of us is willing. We're not willing to take that gamble. Without no, kids. we're not risking that. So Or our own health or the health of family members. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're moms. If we were to get sick, that would be crazy for our yeah. family. So we're not ready yet to take that chance to be around people that are not within our household unless we're going like grocery shopping or something. So right, right. when we dreamt up this channel, we had every intent of filming together and then some bumps came along in the road and we couldn't start and couldn't start. And then when we were ready to start, this COVID happened. Came. Yeah. So for now, we're just going to record this way and we appreciate everybody who's subscribed to us and who's sticking with us and we know that sometimes the quality isn't the best the audio's quality isn't the best but i promise our content is good and we're here to entertain and as soon yep. as coronavirus has died down we're gonna be together we'll film together and go do some exciting stuff together yeah. and get out in the world but for now we're gonna stay in our house with our kids and mm -hmm. we just want to stay safe yeah, so and we have so much planned too. So if you guys stay tuned, Michelle and I have been talking about this since what last year. So we it's have a lot of ideas, but then the yeah. corona happened. So this is, you know, one way to start this channel and share with you guys what we like to do. But once the corona is over um, and everybody is safe or going to be safe, then Michelle and I are going to hook up. We'll finally see each other in person, Mama, and we'll have a lot of exciting things for you guys. Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody outside of my house. Like, I mean, I go to the grocery store, but I run in and out. I haven't seen any of my family since February. So Yeah, same here. <laughs> same One day here. we'll be able to. So, One day yeah. everything's going to be okay again, and Someday. we'll be filming together. <laughs> yep. So that's why let's help out each other, guys. Let's wear a mask, With wash us. your hands all the time. Just stay clean, stay safe. Yes. Wear your mask. But mm -hmm. thank you for sticking with us. We know yep. the quality gets a little funky sometimes with our Wi-Fi, <laughs> but <laughs> stick with us, please. Yes. All right. So I'll jump into the story, Mama, this guy. All right. Let's do it. Creep. He's a creeper. Mm -mm. Freaked me out when I was reading about him. Okay, so William Devin Howell. He was born February 11th, 1970 in Hampton, Virginia. He is now known as one of the most prolific serial killers in Connecticut history. He mm -hmm. killed seven women, um, possibly more. They don't really know for sure. Mm -hmm. So he was arrested several times in like his early years, his early 20s for drug-related crimes. And he was just a drifter. He worked like odd jobs, mowed lawns. He mostly lived in his van. Mm -hmm. um, he spent a lot of time in North Carolina also and Florida, but just kind of not a real place to settle down and stay. 
So he was eventually arrested for what they believed to be murder, but they couldn't prove it 100%. But mm-hmm. I'll tell you about this arrest, but she was not his first victim. And it took a while for police to realize that this was not his first victim. So, yeah, I feel like yeah. sometimes it's always like that, you know, like somebody murders somebody and then the cops or the investigators kind of link it towards like the third or the fourth murder. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty scary. And especially like when you know they have ties to other states. So they kind of went around Mm -hmm. and you wonder like, is there missing people in that state where he had been that maybe he killed? Yeah. So uh, July 31st, 2003, a woman called the police to report her sister missing. Her sister was 33-year-old Nilsa Arizmendi. Um, Her sister was last seen getting into William Howell's 1984 Ford Econoline van and you mm-hmm. know when I was reading the story you know what that, that nope. like stereotypical like creeper van yeah creeper or the rape van. van yes straight yep. up I mean not like the creepy white van it was like no. kind of like two-toned but oh my god when I saw the story I was like oh hell no he had a creeper van <laughs> like right oh. right and nowadays if you see one of those it's like mm, I'm going the other way you ever yeah. come out to your car, or like when you've been in the store, you come out to your car and there's like a van parked next to you and you're oh, like, no, I'm calling the security <laughs> guard and you're like, can you walk me to my car, please? <laughs> oh my God. Or if it's like on your driver's side, so you're like, oh, yes. this is a setup. I, I mean, mean no offense to, you, you know, like no the, the van good owners. people that actually own those vehicles, you know, but I'm just saying the stereotype is. Yes. Stereotype yeah. is yeah. when you see a van, it's a creeper van. Like, right. those just that look, not all of them, just some of not them. Not all of them. We're not saying all of them, you know, but, yeah. you know, because back in the days, like what, in the 90s or something, yes. th- that's what kidnappers used yes. to kidnap their victims. So now when you see one, it's like, we better watch out. You better be careful. Yeah. It's better to be <laughs> safe than sorry is what I say, so. (laughs) Exactly. So with this one, though, he actually made a lot of mistakes. And like Mm -hmm. I said, it wasn't his first victim, but he started to get sloppy. So this is, he made mistakes because he knew this woman. And she had a boyfriend that he knew. Um, So when police went to question him, because her sister told the police, like, hey, she was last seen with this guy. And mm-hmm. so Nilsa and her boyfriend were, they were drug addicts, and she would prostitute to help them get money to buy drugs. Her mm-hmm. boyfriend knew that she was with William Howell, but he was afraid to call the police because, you know, his own problems. Yeah. So her sister is the one who called 911, but at first police actually suspected her boyfriend of in her disappearance, but he was given a lie detector test and ultimately he passed it. So police eventually caught up with William Howell and they questioned him and he said that he had only given her a ride, um, but they searched his van and they ended up finding her DNA in the van. So mm. they arrested him. However, they couldn't charge him with murder because there was no body. They didn't know where she was. So instead of going through a trial, he took an Alford plea for like a manslaughter charge. Do you know what, a, what a, um, the Alford plea is? It's kind of like, you're not necessarily like admitting guilt, but it's kind of like, I know you have accepting. enough evidence to convict me. Yeah, but the prosecution's kind of like, well, we don't know if our case is really strong enough to get a conviction, so he mm-hmm. go for an Alfred plea. So he was then at that time sentenced to 15 years in prison. So right. while he was in prison, he was like eight years in. And have you ever seen in prisons they give the inmates like playing cards, right, to play cards, but it'll have missing persons pictures on the back yeah. of them. He was playing cards with another inmate and he 
one of the girls was missing, but ended up being one of his victims, was on the deck of cards they were playing with, and he told the other inmate, oh, I know that girl. I know hmm. who she is. And he started to confess all this stuff to this other inmate, right? And it's crazy to me when you hear that they do this, that they, like, tell other inmates, because they always go and tell, because they always yeah. have a deal to try to get out of jail, too, you know? Exactly. So, so it's like, why would you share your crimes to your son? You already know that somebody's going to snitch on you eventually because they want the plea deal. Yeah. So this dude told on him, but mm -hmm. he told this guy, like, oh, yeah, like, um, I've killed all these women. I buried them. He told this other inmate exactly where these women were buried and he called it wow. his garden and he named himself the sick ripper and he talked about his van he told this other inmate i killed them all in my van and he reached his van as the murder mobile this oh, other inmate wow. told the police and he you know told them like dude this guy's like telling me this stuff and at the same period of time like it was crazy you know when you feel like the universe is kind of all working together to make something yeah. happen at the same time a hunter was kind of scoping out this area and I guess they're in Connecticut where this is it gets kind of like marshy ish so I guess like if you try mm -hmm. to like start digging in the ground like water will start to come up so there was a hunter looking for a good spot and he came across some skeletal remains and he <gasps> called the police. So it mm. turns out that this spot is where the other inmate had told them that this is where William Devin Howell's like garden was, right? Yeah. So upon searching the area, they at first didn't find all of the remains. And this was in April of 2015. This time when they went searching, they only found the remains of four women. So the four women they found were, um, first woman I mentioned, Nilsa Arsmandeni, and mm -hmm. there was also three women, their names in a second. So all of these women had been named, they had all been reported named, but it turns out he had a type that he had to prey on. It was all women that had drug problems mm -hmm. and they were prostitutes his thing he preyed on prostitutes he would pick them up and take them in his van and I guess it kind of yeah. started off at first as he would you know have sex with them in his van but he started killing so the first woman that I mentioned was not his victim this is how far back they think possibly they can trace him there is the first woman that was reported missing that they found her remains was uh, Melanie Ruth Camelini she was 29 mm -hmm. years old and a mother of two she went oh, missing no. on January 1st. Yeah. She went Your missing mom. January 1st, 2003. And it's mm -hmm. sad because she had a drug problem. And her family said it wasn't out of the norm for her to kind of answer them and them not hear from her. Yeah. So she was the one first batch to get her remains were identified in 2015. And also Janice Roberts. She was 44 years old. This was actually transgender. This was a transgender woman. Mm -hmm. Met with Devin Howell in a stop and shop. I guess that's a grocery store over there. On mm -hmm. um, She was reported missing June 24th. And this made me angry. Later on, he would admit to all of these things. He said he only killed Janice because he wanted to engage in sex with her and realized it was a man and he strangled her. <gasps> You know That's what? Don't so blame mean. it on her being trans. Do not. You knew you were going to kill her the whole time you didn't kill her because she mm -hmm. was trans. I read that and I was not. I'm not happy. Right. You're already killing no, people. No, I mean, he already had his first victim. And then yeah. he's just trying to make an excuse for, you yeah. know. No. Yeah. No, you knew what you were going to do and it wasn't because she was transgender, so mm -mm. stop it. We don't like that. No, <laughs> not at no, all. not at all. No, and then there was Diane Cusack. She was 54 years old. She disappeared mid-3 also. 
police had actually had contact with her because she um, was in a dispute with like her landlord and that was on night so she went missing sometime after that but she also had a substance abuse problem and she was never mm -hmm. reported missing she had no contact with her family so nobody had reported her missing oh that's so, sad isn't that sad that made me really sad so yeah. they were able to link these murders to him through DNA. Once they searched his van, they had it. I believe, I'm not sure if they had it in impound. I didn't really understand that part. They were able to find DNA from all of his victims inside of his van. And they also were able to find tapes of him having weird, crazy sex with women. But he like hid their face or put stuff over their faces so they couldn't buzz. So police Wait, actually tapes? feel like there's more victims. Tapes of his victims? No, like other or women. That other the women victims that... they found. Yes. So police fear that there is probably more victims out there. There's probably yeah. more than the seven that they linked mm -hmm. to him. So police actually went back again. And it was later on, like 2017, I think it was they went back and they searched again and they found more remains that Ooh. they didn't get the first time in his freaking garden and whatever he called it so the other remains they found were uh marilyn gonzalez she was 50 26 years old i'm sorry also a mother of two who went missing in 2003 um she was discovered along with the other women in his farm and then or his garden whatever you called it and then also joy valine martinez she was 23 years old she went missing october 10th 2003 she wasn't reported missing until march 29th 2004 because also she had a drug problem and she was reported missing because she didn't show up for her own birthday party and her family knew mm -hmm. that no matter what whenever there was important like dates in the family that she would have mm -hmm. come and she didn't show up for her own birthday party. So that's when she was reported missing. And then it was Mary Jane Menard. She was 40 years old. She, this one, I don't know if she had a substance abuse problem because it says she was a substance abuse counselor. So I'm not hmm. sure how he met up with her or if she ended up like having her own drug problem. That I didn't really get a lot of detail. Yeah. On. I didn't understand that part. But for 2017, he was sentenced to six consecutive life sentences after he actually pled guilty to the murders. He actually oh. guilty mm -hmm. um, for this part. He actually cried and apologized to the families at his sentencing. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you felt bad, you never would have done it. But he actually had told that other inmate when he confessed to that other inmate, he said that he thought there was just like a monster inside him that had mm. like just woken up and there was nothing he could do to control it. Oh, and then he actually told this inmate, one of the women that murdered, murdered her in the winter when the ground was still frozen. And so he actually couldn't bury her. So he kept her like in blankets and stuff in the back of his van and he kept her in the weeks and he called her his baby and he would like be with her and stuff in the back of the van and then he Ooh. ended up like just like cutting off her fingertips and like dismantling her jaw and stuff before he like tried to bury her but i guess he couldn't really bury any of them very deep because of the land was kind of weird like if you started to dig even like two or three feet down water would start to come up so i right. guess that's how they found them I mean, most of them so easily is because the land is kind of weird. So there did, and... did the body start like <clears throat> smelling? Because I think you have to like what bury them like six feet or something so that the the smell wouldn't linger. I don't know, and it says like this area was behind like a shopping center. Oh, wow. So I don't know if it's just because it's like a wooded area and kind of like back away like nobody noticed until like 2015 when this hunter yeah. went to go find a new spot to go hunting and he like came across like remains. I don't know. That's and isn't that crazy. crazy. So when and they went there and 
found the bodies were they just skeletons i think he found like a skull or something and then he called yeah. the police and then they came and started to investigate and that's when they found four of the women <gasps> they didn't even oh, find no. everything at first and it's crazy because if he hadn't have made a mistake with Nelsa, I don't know how to say her name. I'm so sorry. I think it's Nelsa. I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. if he hadn't have made the mistakes he made with her, it would have kept going. And yeah. I don't know if maybe like he, um, I don't know, he just started to get sloppy. Maybe he just started to feel like so confident in himself that he was doing it, not getting caught. Like mm -hmm. he made like really big mistakes. Like he knew her and her boyfriend, I guess, like, they would rent hotel rooms a lot, like along this like stretch of road where like she would go and, you know, work to get money. And um, he like would stay in the room with them. They would like let him stay with them for a couple of nights so he didn't sleep in his van. So why he picked her was like pretty dumb, but I mean, not dumb. I mean, it's good he got caught, but like. Yeah. Why would you? She knew you and her boyfriend knew you and you picked her. Mm. That's crazy. But, and then I was thinking like how he was crying at his sentence, like at sentencing and saying he was mm -hmm. sorry. Like, obviously you felt like good about what you did because you were bragging to that other inmate and you're exactly. the one who nicknamed yourself the sick ripper and your murder mobile. And you yeah. said the women were your, buried in your garden. Like you didn't feel bad. And he didn't even do it just once. You, he did it like multiple times, you know? Yeah. If you were going to feel bad, you would have stopped at like one. So, you know, yeah. you know, he knew what he was doing and he liked it. Kind of like what he said, there was a monster in him that he probably needs to feed and he couldn't control it. And that's yeah. when he started killing all these poor women you know yeah yeah that's what he said there was a monster inside of him that he couldn't control anymore and when he was sentenced he was like crying and apologizing and he actually wanted the death penalty but um the Connecticut Supreme Court actually got rid of the death penalty in Connecticut in 2015 mm -hmm. so like right before they found the other women or like right in the same time so there's no death sentence for him he's just serving consecutive life sentences mm -hmm. But, and I don't know, for anybody that likes to read books, there's actually um, a book written about him. It's called His Garden Conversations with a Serial Killer. And it's autobiographical and biographical true crime novel. Um, it's written by Anne K. Howard. And she's actually a practicing attorney. Uh, she wrote a book about him. So if you like to read novels, there's a book written Check about him. Out. Yeah, so that is the story of William Devin Howell, the sick that ripper of insane. Connecticut. So he's still alive. Yeah, he's still he's still he'll be in there for the rest of his life. I mean, hopefully. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? And that fifteen, he had been sentenced to fifteen years for what is it called? It's like um, manslaughter or like he was sentenced to something for no star um ours mendy he was mm -hmm. eight years into that 15 year sentence when he started bragging to that inmate so you know what i was kind of thinking too how he was like a like a drifter and he slept in his van like yeah maybe okay so he said he like felt like there was a monster inside of him right so maybe he actually you think he was thinking like okay i've been here this long they're gonna let me out and i'm gonna go back out there and i'm gonna kill again so maybe if i confess to this to this guy mm -hmm. he's gonna tell on me and they're not gonna let me out Maybe, yeah. maybe maybe that's what maybe that's that's like. what I was thinking too. So maybe subconsciously or whatever. Yeah. He did. He you know he didn't like what he did, and he knows himself. So you know that's the only way to kind of like stop him because obviously he didn't get caught for yeah. the other crimes that you know mm -hmm. he's done. Yeah. That's crazy. Maybe deep down yeah. inside. Maybe he was really sorry, or maybe a part of him, or something, you know? That's why he kind of did that. I mean, like, I know this guy is going to talk, so let me tell this guy about the stories. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he was like, oh, I'll call myself the sick ripper, so they'll see, like, it's really, like, messed up, yeah. and 
I did really bad stuff to them. I don't know. Or maybe kind they'll look weird. into it. They'll double check. Maybe that's why he did it. Maybe that's why he confessed because he knew if he got out of jail, he was going to keep killing. So maybe he mm -hmm. did it to kind of control himself, maybe. Yeah. I don't or know. maybe he just wanted to brag about what he's done. It's like, I'm not getting caught. They're not, you know, catching mm -hmm. on. I don't mm -hmm. know. Because I feel like, you know, like serial killers, like, they think differently, I think. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so who yeah. knows what goes on in their heads? Or... I don't know. I don't know. Terrible. That right, that's our is story. Horrible. And that was like horrible. a long time before they found those bodies. Yeah. So sad. A long time. Really sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Well, that's that's my story, Mama. That was that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we learned a lot. So if you guys like the video, we have more to come. Like we said, um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please subscribe. And also you can turn on the notification bell so that every time we upload, you get notified. And stay tuned after we stop talking. We're gonna post uh, missing people to the end of each video. So each state that we talk about, we'll pick a missing person from that state. So at the end of our video, we'll put up their information and a picture of them and mm -hmm. contact information for the local authorities. In case yeah. anybody watching happens to recognize them or know anything about it. So we'll see yeah, you guys. So hopefully just check it out. Check out the phone numbers. It's going to be attached there too. And hopefully somebody somewhere out there, you know, can maybe watch this video and find those missing people familiar. So keep an eye out. So that's what we're going to do each video. So at the end of the video, we're going to post a missing person. Try to do some good when talking about the bad. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.